the Joe Rogan experience. Are you a big ghost guy? Um, I believe it's possible. I'm Are obsessed. You? Are you? I, I, so really weird side hobby of mine. I go ghost hunting. I've been like around the world. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. What have you experienced? Have you ever had like an absolute moment when you're like, oh my God, I'm in the presence of a, a poltergeist? Mm, not, still not a thousand percent. I've definitely witnessed things that I cannot for the life of me explain that have creeped me out. The timing has been impeccable. I've seen things move that there's just no fucking way that they've moved. I've gotten answers back on EVPs, but for me, it is one of those things I, I do need to see it. Isn't an EVP like a radio though? No, EVP is just a recorder. It's a recorder. What is um, what's that radio thing? I'm sorry then. What uh, is the one where they where they like listen? There's my, a bunch of different daughter, names. My daughter's heavily into this shit. What does she watch? Heavily, Sam and Colby. You had them on, right? Yes. So great uh, guys. So. I met these other guys. There's another channel called the Overnight Channel who are equally as popular as Sam and Colby. And they actually used to work together. And they, I believe they split off and each do their own thing. But that's who I started going with. So I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with those guys. So these kids, they, uh, th the Sam and Colby guys just went into the Conjuring House. I was just there. Maybe is, a month and a half ago. You went into the Conjuring House By too? myself, Joe. Okay. Do you believe that there's something going on in that house? The Conjuring movies are fucking great. My, the it's my favorite franchise. They're fun. And I'm there's so many of them. They, oh, yeah. They really did it right. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to be smart, they branched off with The Nun. They branched oh, off with yeah. Annabelle. And I love the way they tie in the story yeah. for each one to make it all one chronological story. It's genius. Yeah. I, I will say I wasn't... I wasn't as scared as I've been in a lot of places we've been. There is some kind of solace to the house, but you get to know the history of it, and it just it does make sense that there would be something here. I mean, it's on some ley lines of water underground. It's There was war spot there. There's apparently bodies buried on on the property in the walls of, of the, um, the property structures and stuff. There's a lot of history that goes into it that just makes for the, kind of the perfect storm for some creepy shit. Mm. But... I didn't witness anything that was that insane. Some items moved, some some cars rolled off of the children's dressers a couple of times on cue. And that's that's the one thing I do pride ourselves in these videos is so often we get absolutely nothing because we don't fake anything. So you only get to see the highlights. Like there's so many times we'll go to a place that is so notoriously haunted and we'll be there for 10 hours and get absolutely nothing. And it sucks, but that makes when something does happen that much more valuable. It's so what, much more impressive. What do you think, so do you think a ghost is like a, a, the soul of a person that's left behind? Or do you think the ghost is almost like space and time mm. because of a horrible incident contain a memory? And like that memory is almost like it, it like shows up in current time sometimes. There's a guy named Rupert Sheldrake. I forget what his uh, field of study is, but mm -hmm. he had this theory about uh, things, and he he believes that objects contain memories. Oh, interesting. And it's not he's not the only one that inanimate has this. objects. Yeah, that things contain memories. And this is one of the reasons why, like, people kind of universally support this idea that if someone was murdered in a house, mm -hmm. you must tell the people, inform the people that are about to buy it. You have to tell them, hey, somebody got murdered in this house. Like, maybe oh. you don't, maybe you don't want to buy this house. Now, does the maybe you should think about it? Does the potential owner have to ask that information? It's a good question. Um, I'd want to know. Yeah, I think. It's a good question. I think they should have to inform you because there's something about someone being murdered in a spot that freaks us out. Mm -hmm. And this, this is my question. How you knew the conjured house was haunted, mm -hmm. right? So you go there with this feeling and this expectation. That's what I always wonder about these things. Like how much of, how much of, and it, this isn't just imagining things. This is like the mind itself seems to have some unmeasured effect on the world. Yeah. I, I, th I think the way you think has an unmeasured effect in terms of like this, there's energy that you put out, there's connections you make with people, they're very, very unmeasured. And you we can manifest your own perception of things for sure. Yeah, so m what my concern is, is like if you go into a place with a, 
pre-existing knowledge of ghosts, like you think ghosts are here, you think ghosts are real, you have this thought in your mind that you, you maybe experience a ghost in this place that's haunted. You're at a, this elevated level of anticipation. Mm -hmm. You're probably really nervous and kind of freaked out and your imagination starts firing up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even saying that these people are lying or that they're seeing things that aren't there. I'm saying maybe you make things show up. Yeah. Maybe you see memories. Maybe you experience some horrible energy that existed in this spot 50 years ago, 100 yeah. years ago, that there's like ways you can tune into that. I could see that being possible. But to me, that's what's so exciting about it is like y you go hoping for those solidified answers. You're, ho you're going yeah. hoping to witness something that you couldn't have possibly made up. But you know why I think that? too is like you never see him in the daytime ghosts don't exist on the sometimes street. yeah but not outside they're never outside that's a yeah. very good point that's my point is like you're always trapped so you're always in this like weird space like if you had a wolf in your house you'd be freaked out you yeah. want to get outside yeah right you don't have a wolf in the fire oh, it's a fucking wolf in the house yeah anytime you're in a contained area your brain has this heightened sense of like being trapped in awareness and, yeah. and how to escape. I mean, every horror movie is the same. When you got to get to the door, get to the door, right? Everybody's trying to fumble with the keys uh -huh. and the, the monsters chasing them yeah. and they get it just in time, right? That is a reoccurring theme in the human mind. You, if you're, you're trapped in a fucking house with a killer or a ghost or a wolf, you it's know, scary. You know where that makes the most sense? We did the USS Hornet up in the Bay Area. Yeah. And we had the whole ship to ourselves, which I was so excited about because I love military stuff. I love history. I was so excited to go there and just witness it. And they sent me by myself on a ba basically a game of hide and seek where they, I had to go find them in the ship somewhere after I had to like mm. count to 100 by myself. It was the most terrifying place I've ever been because if you've never been in like the bowel of a ship, it's so unfamiliar. Like doorways don't look the same. You know, you have to step over them and everything. There's so many pipes and everything sticking out. It's such an unfamiliar environment, especially in the dark. It's terrifying. You think I can't possibly run away from something in here. It's too, there's too many obstacles. You yeah. don't you don't you don't know if that's a wall or a pipe or something peeking, peeking around to like look at you. It's fucking terrifying because of exactly that. You feel so trapped.